This is how I see most Blender users making decals. And this is a new way. No shrink wrap nonsense, just a material projection. This technique lets me do some things that a shrink wrap doesn't look. The dirt here is a decal. I can use it on two different objects at the same time. Extremely useful for hiding awkward intersections made by lazy work, like, like here, with some climbing plants, hiding an otherwise very obvious seam. Also this, I can mix the decal with the material underneath, like with this graffiti. Uh, it picks up the normal map from the bricks and gets bumpy. It also blends with the dirt from the ground. I'll show you exactly how to do that. A shrink wrap looks a little too flat on here. Baking? Yes. If you're so happy with your work that you want to make it permanent, bake it. Now it's part of the object forever. I'll link to a good baking tutorial if you're interested in that. Here's the real kicker. They can cut a hole in an object. This is not a boolean. It's a texture with an opacity channel that lets you see right through. And since it's all done in the node editor, it plays well with this uh, crack too. This is simply a better way to do decals. And without it, I could not have made this clip. start with the graffiti on the wall, so slide over a shader editor and click into the material off the wall. Now let's add an image texture in here and open up the graffiti. I have just a transparent PNG here that I downloaded from the internet. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, you can press Ctrl T and that will bring up the mapping coordinates of this texture. Let's preview this by control shift left clicking on it. And let's actually preview the alpha channel to see what we're dealing with. The way to project this using an empty is to use the textures object coordinates. So we'll move this from UV to object and then select an empty. I'll shift A, add a cube empty here, move it over to roughly where we want it and let's actually pin this shader editor so we don't lose it when we click on anything else. So in here we can select the object to pick the coordinates from and it will project downwards using this object's z-axis, like this. So all we have to do is rotate this on x just like here and there we go, say 90 degrees. And we can fix the aspect ratio roughly, just stretch it out a little bit. Now you can see it's repeating. So let's go to the image texture here and change it from repeat to clip. That way we'll only get one, but it's offset into the upper right quadrant of the empty. That is because it uses UV coordinates. If you think of this center point as zero, and then you have the Y axis going up and the X axis going over, the UV is in positive space. So all we have to do is go to the mapping node and change the location, all the components, to 0.5, and that'll move it to the center. And we can also stretch it out to the borders by setting scale to 0.5. Now it behaves like we would expect. So let's mix this into our material. We'll add a mix node, set it from float to color, and let's just mix it into the base color for now. Using this alpha, I'll drive the factor and mix in, say, a red color. Control shift right click on the principled BSDF to preview it, and there we have it. It's just mixing into the base color at the moment, but there is in fact a problem that we can't see right now, but it'll be obvious once we move over to the other side. This thing is projecting all the way through. And if we had more geometry over here, it would project onto that as well. So we have to limit it somehow. There are a couple of ways to do that, but my favorite way is to use the object coordinates again here and separate out the X, Y, and Z components. 
if we preview these, you'll see that this shows us the x values of this coordinate system. It's zero here, meaning it's black, it goes all the way to white, and it even goes past white, but it can't show that because it only goes from black to white. If we page through these, we go to the y-axis and finally to the z-axis, this is what we want. You can tell that the positive side is white and the negative side is black. So we want to restrict this to only be within where our box is, which is going to be from negative one to positive one over here. So let's pull out from this z component and type in less than. This will separate the component with a hard line of whatever value this is. So to get this line to be exactly on here, here, let me visualize that by scaling it down a little bit. To get this line over here, we want this to be one. So let's do it right there. Let's make another one to make a line at this point, which is negative one. However, we want to flip it. So instead of saying less than, we can do a greater than negative one. Control shift, right click between these to mix them together. And let's set that to multiply turn up the factor to max. Now we have a little bar showing just the area of the empty. If we multiply these colors over this factor right here, let's do that. Mix color multiply over this alpha, then it'll take the black parts of each of the pipes and exclude the decal from anywhere else. Let's preview that to see if it works and it definitely seems to. It's no longer on the back side. So now you can choose where it'll be by whether or not it is inside the geometry. So that's the basic setup for the decal. You can even scale it on its own z-axis to restrict the range, like that. And this is how I made the graffiti that I used in the render you saw earlier. Now let's do the sewer grill, because that uses a slightly different technique than this one. It has its own bump, its own opacity. It's basically its own material overlaid onto this material right here. So here I have the sidewalk set up with all the other decals. You'll see in the material that there's the normal material part, and then there are these nodes. These correspond to the decals, one for each. So we have the tree grate, we have the dirt along the edge, and we have the crack. So let's make one of these, but for the sewer grill. So we'll add a principled BSDF and Control shift t on the keyboard with the Node Wrangler enabled. And this material is a PBR decal that I downloaded from Substance 3D Assets. You can get these from textures.com, from Quixel Bridge. So I'll select all the maps that I want for now and press principled texture setup. That will set up the entire texture for me. Everything mapped up correctly. So let's preview that onto the surface. And it looks absolutely horrible because we haven't set up the mapping correctly. Of course, we do need the object coordinates and we want to select the empty. Now to change from repeat on all of these at the same time, you can select all the nodes and while holding down Alt, you can change repeat to clip. That'll do it for all of them. Move the mapping over 0.5 and scale it 0.5 so it fills in a logical way. And let's mix this into the whole pipe with Control shift right click to mix them together with a mix shader. Move that over to the right and we have a problem. It's mixing in a bad alpha on the whole thing, so everything becomes transparent. So, we need to tell Blender where exactly to mix this in. And you might think, well, let's use this alpha channel then, and let's try that. Let's move this alpha channel and pipe it into the mix factor. It, of course, only shows where the material has alpha. Meaning these holes should be transparent and not show the asphalt underneath. So for that, I had to make another map. Let's duplicate this alpha map, open it up, and you'll see that I have made a version of the alpha map where I painted in the center to make that completely white. This is where we want to mix in the new material. So let's pull that up right into the mix factor, and now we should have a working material. Look at that, that's fantastic. 
So to make the node like I did with these other ones, let's pull this down a little bit and pull this away from its source so I can pick this from outside the node. Select all of these, Control G to make a new group, Control Tab to go out of the group again and rename this to Sewer Grill. This object here, I want to keep right underneath it. Let's Control H, hide what I don't need from that node and move it into the pipe. Now, where you put this in the pipe is important. For instance, if I move this crack over, over behind it, then the crack will be over the sewer grill, which is, which is, which is not correct. And I'll just show you just because it's kind of neat. Since all of these wall objects have the exact same material applied to them, then this decal will work over all of them doesn't matter what object it is. And you can even make that work with separate objects. For instance, this dirt right here, if I want this to be both on the ground and on the wall, look at it. It's going to the ground material and we will find the dirt corner decal. If I mute that, you'll see that turns it off and back on again. So we can control C, copy that and paste it on the wall material. And if we mix this in after the wall material, like so, it'll apply to both of them at the same time. And it will respect the transformation of the controller decal. Here it is. So here that will respect both of them. And if you were wondering about these spotlights here, look, I'll uh, turn down the world a bit so you can see them. These are actually not IES lights. They are controlled with nodes, fully customizable, and I have a tutorial on them that you can watch right now, if you want. Recording this, my channel has 65 subscribers. Among them, my mom and dad and most of my friends. As you can imagine, one new subscriber means a lot at this stage. So if you like the video, subscribe. It would make me very happy.